The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Hi, folks. This is Monday. You know, I've been getting these dates wrong the whole weekend. I kept thinking today was the 21st. No, it's the 20th. Fortunately for most of the charts that I sent out to my subscribers, I kept saying the 20th. Um, but I did say 21st, I'm sure, on some of the many charts there, a lot of charts. We've got, this is so typical of a phase like this, a sort of a transition phase, where we've, we're looking at, you remember I spoke last week that there could be a sign that the lagger, the, the sectors that were lagging badly, portfolio managers could decide, hey, there's a much better chance that we could pick up these stocks that have gone to lows in the 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 dollar area with a really nice percentage gain instead of putting a bundle more money into stocks that are in the 100, 200, 300, 400 area. This is just my thinking and I needed to see follow through today. Well, first of all, going to Friday's close and then into today and tomorrow to be able to judge whether or not there is some veracity in that speculation. It's only, um, it's, only, it's only speculation. So, before we get the numbers and everything, I'm liable to forget. Let me just do this right off the bat. A week from this coming Thursday, there'll be a live Tiger Technicians. I've never done this before. This is <clears throat> a live Tiger Technicians Hour. I'll be preceding that live for one hour uh, with, a, with a presentation. Some questions and answers, of course, uh, will be uh, uh, involved there. <clears throat> but then I do the Tiger Technicians Hour. So it's 10 o'clock to 11, 11 o'clock to 12, live Tiger Technicians Hour with guests in the audience. Nice. I'm looking forward to that. And people already started signing up, so please, I need to be able to tell them the number of seats. Got a lovely venue here in Newton, Mass., the Garden City. And you'll see why. It's just beautiful. I'm looking out at all these trees. Trees, trees, trees everywhere you go. <laughs> um, and one of the things that I'm going to be doing is that after the show, 12 till, I need to be out of there at about 1 o'clock. So 12 to 12.30 and 12.45, and then 1 o'clock we need to be out. So I'll be taking question and answer, but in a very different way to usual. I'm going to try to apply it maybe to live charts for those of you who do intraday trading, maybe the e-minis or what. It does cues. I don't care. You know me. I don't care. As long as it moves up or down, I don't really care. And the timing of this just couldn't be better because I think by the end of this week, the beginning of next week, not only will we get a sense of whether there's going to be a, a fairly deep pullback, a shallow pullback, or a pullback from a higher level, a high-level consolidation. Or the fourth thing, I don't even want to talk about it, but I have to talk about it, a spiral to the upside that takes out um, Dow 13,570, area, very strong resistance there. Uh, we'll see. So, what I talked about when I talk about this phase of the market, this is where in my portfolio we have longs and we have shorts. But we actually we had a short on Friday. We're out now for a dollar twenty a loss, a two two point five percent loss. Um, I just I had to take a chance on this particular stock, and we have another two other shorts. Um, both of them are down a little bit, but one of them, I my suspicion is, I don't know if I have, I don't know if I want to put myself through this. I have a suspicion that the price that we're in at as a short, it's actually a long because it's an ETF, uh, a short fund. Um, the price we're in it, I would not be surprised if we could just hold this no matter what happens because at some point it's going to give us a really good gain. I don't know if I want to do that. I, don't know if I, I find that I'm, if I'm sitting there with a percentage loss, big, you know, I don't like more than 2%, 3%, maybe 5%. I just don't like them bigger than that unless it was part of the plan because it's being weighted by other things that are doing well. Now, in terms of the portfolio, I, I have to say that we do have a stock that's up huge. Um, it's, 
it's really um, garnering a, a tremendous amount of, of interest. And this was, I felt for a while that you need not be afraid of stocks that you've done your homework with. And if they are showing signs of strength, regardless of what the market is doing, now there are stocks occasionally that can do that. You can go with the trend of the stock regardless, or as some people like to say, irregardless, although the word is actually regardless, of the trend of the market, because that stock is showing weakness or strength. That, to me, is really important. Now, I have added another stock with earnings coming out real soon um, as a short. Why? Because my analysis, I, I missed what could be a phantom peak in the chap way, where there's a double top, and then the very next bar breaks to a new high. Well, a new recovery that high is in the waveform. And that says to me that we probably did make a peak D there. Well, we will know soon enough, but I think the risk is so slight at this particular point. And this is just a, a what I've still got a whole two days or so to think about. Uh, there's, and this is a whopping gap to the upside. Then, of course, it's not going to be good. So I'll think about what I'm going to do, how we're going to handle this particular trade. So we have longs and we have shorts. And I like that. I like it very much at this particular point. Because if I'm wrong, the stops on the, on the, um, or the buy stops on the short side will be taken out. I can let the, the, um, the stocks that are moving up, all our longs, in fact, on the long side, that is not the short side, all the longs are actually doing very well. Um, or, you know, to talk percentages intraday is silly, but uh, some of them have had really huge uh, double-digit gains. And even though I light, I, I've lightened up, those gains are still there. And I've missed. Now, I needed to show you something. So here we are. We're talking about, and this is I, a reason why I'm mentioning this now, is I want to show when we meet that you should not be afraid to go long or to go short if you do your homework. Now, what does that mean? It means that you are chart specific and that's what i'll be showing you so where thursday may the 30th basil chapman will do a live broadcast of the tiger technicians hour in newton mass please i'm asking you i'd love for you to go to the front page of tf and if you get if you intend to come please sign up it's just important i need to know seats it's just and not only that i i'm i as i did in san francisco there was no one from TFNN there. I can't do, I can't do everything. I just sometimes try to do everything. It's not a good thing to do. I want to give, devote as much time as I can to the participants, to the attendees. So what I will be doing is I'll have you signing up through TFNN. Everything must be done through TFNN so that I can know I can give the seating, uh, seating numbers, etc. Uh, because this is, it's not a very big venue. It's just a lovely, cozy place, and I can, you know, there, there are seats, and I'll be able to add extra seats, but I, I need to tell them. So thank you for that. Now let's just go to something else. I want to talk about this because the Tiger Dollars have been given out to TV, uh, TFNM, and I, I, I'm hoping that you're able to, to use your Tiger Dollars for all of our services. Uh, we have some fabulous services. You know, the, Dave White came out with the, uh, the Art of the Charts. It's using Tom O'Brien's methodology as well as, and what Larry has taught us in the uh, the Gartis and the Tiger Gartis. I want to just show something here. I'm going to I'm going to go to all the numbers. I don't think there's any big rush right now uh, at this particular point. I, I'll get to the numbers. I want you to show that you are if you learn tools, technical tools, it helps you in to enable you to decipher and then make decisions based on 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 a highlighted something or other stock in this case. And then you can make your own decisions. For instance, Staples, SPLS, came up about, I'm not sure, maybe it was four days ago or something like that, um, as a Tiger Gartley, a bearish Gartley, A to B equals C to D ratio, one to A equals 1.24, D target is 14 by 52, and it was, it was just about there. I did my homework, and I looked at it, and I said, wait a minute. There's a rule that if the car, the, the, the if the if the Gartley breaks above as a, a, a bearish Gartley breaks above the point that was supposed to be the reversal to the downside point, it could in fact extend and then become a Gartley. Uh, I'm sorry, a butterfly. So here we are. What I did is my homework, and I said, wait a minute. 
I mean, right now I'm just going to go to the uh, to the black background charts. Over the weekend, you know, I spent so much time on black background charts. I, as as subscriber Warren says. It gives you depth, it gives you coloration, it gives you uh, all sorts of things that are very important. Um, well, look at this. If you're looking at staples, I'm not going to talk about anything other than, I'm not even going to talk about the waveform at this particular point. What I'm going to talk about are technical tools. Look at this stochastic. So we were right here. Let's talk about it as if it, I think it was the 15th or the 14th, uh, 15th or 16th. So it's around about uh, 14.45, 14 point, uh, somewhere around there. And what I said, um, in terms of the stochastic, it was in the 90 percentage area. And the MACD was still rising. Well, those are technical tools that I use and I love. In fact, I'm going to embarrass myself and I'm going to say, but wait a minute, you were long the DDM, 200 percent long. Um, the DDM, that's the 200% long the Dow 30, and you got out the other day only because it was in leg E, but you didn't really have a signal. Well, wasn't that premature? And my answer is, you bet it was premature. Yeah, only by about a point and a quarter or something, but the, it was premature because I should technically wait for the peak to be made, and the peak still hasn't been made. Why? Because the Dow made a new recovery high. So now let me go back to staples, because look, the technicals here are as good in the Dow as they are in staples. Actually, staples is a little bit stronger. So staples, on a daily basis, has shown that the 90% area has been very strong support. That's very good in the, in the, in the uh, stochastic. MACD is still expanding. Look at the green lines. Those are the histogram. That is still very positive, way above the 0% line. If you go to the weekly chart, I'm not, I haven't got letters here because of the black background chart. I lost those data. I'm not even going to get into that. A, restart, A, B, C, D. And now you could be retesting, wanting to retest the high 1519. So my assessment said, you know what? I'm not going to tell you any of our positions in the other, but I said, this is still very nice. It's acting very well. Yes, it could pull back, but in the meantime, if it breaks out, and today's high is already 14.75, so essentially it's broken by 20 cents. What was the area of the, the Gartley? Is there a chance now that it can go into a butterfly pattern? So what I wanted to point out is that you can use all sorts of tools because it highlights something that you don't have the time for. You know, it does 5,000, whatever it is, stocks. So these things are all great. So you've got Tiger Dollars if you can use. You've got my service, my Tiger, my my. my uh, um, opening call, my daily service, every single day. I, today I must have done about 9 or 10 charts. So as we're about to go to break, the Dow's up 16 at 15,371. S&P's up 2 at 1669. Comp index is up 6 at uh, 3505. Gold is down 3. Oh, I wanted to talk about gold. I think it's making a little bit of a low here. I think this is going to be very important. Silver's down 44 cents. We've got crude oil up 92 cents. And bonds are down 5 cents. And the dollar's made a PD. Let's have a look at that when we get back. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Tech News. And Zally, no, I'm not doodling, drawing little pictures here like my little granddaughter. Um, I am, in fact, doing something very important. It's called channels. It's really the art of the channels. And something I spend a lot of time on, looking at channels in certain ways. And we're going to get to that in a moment. We've got our first caller. We've got Ken in Fort Madison. Hi, Ken. How are you? I'm very good. <clears throat> Excuse me. Very good, Basil. Good. Uh, I talked to you uh, Friday about SLW. And you... Silver Wheaton, yes. <clears throat> I was wondering what you thought about it this morning. I, I think it goes ex-dividend tomorrow, if that makes any difference. Oh, so okay. Ex well, actually, if it goes ex-dividend uh Wait, you needed to be in it to get the ex-dividend, correct? Yeah, it yeah, that doesn't make a difference to me. Well, it doesn't make a difference except that if it's 15 cents or 20 hours, whatever it is, it's going to take it away from the price. Right. But you will not receive it. You'll just see the price go down. That's the big difference. E exactly. Okay, so what I'll be talking about is that the stop will be different. Here we go. I like it. I like it as a as a risk reward even though um in the arch formation the day is young i need to see where it closes now you remember what i spoke to you about i said in the arch formation of the chapman wave methodology many times the bar that takes out the left side low should also preferably be the bar that goes right back in to go retest that arch formation it's at that point you will see whether or not you're going to get a buy signal 
That's not a buy mode. That's just a signal that can fail, but it's the first real buy signal that will be generated. That's number one. Number two is it should happen with that bar or very the ne very next bar, and the next bar should have a higher low. So it's essentially doing the same thing but a bar late. That's number, number two. Number three is when I look at the technicals, I prefer when the MACD is coming off a bottom and turning up, and the stochastic is a little bit or, or already ahead, so it's giving me a positive divergence. So now let's see what we've got. What we've got in the daily chart for silver wheat and trading at 22.04 up 27 cents. It made a low today of 21.45. It would have been much lower if the market opened at about uh, uh, 4.30 or no, about uh, late last night because gold was down even more, about 18, I think it was it. About eighteen dollars, I might be mistaken. That's, I think that's what I saw. Yeah. Now, what I'm looking at here is that there's a chance, and a really good chance. Let me go to the hundred and twenty minute chart. Yeah, there's that divergence that I'm talking about. You can see it in the hundred and twenty minute charts, folks. If you're looking at my charts, this little one that I'm showing over here, that's a hundred and twenty minute chart. Now I'm going to move it away, and the one that you're looking at here is right in this square. That is the daily chart. When I go like this, you'll see the weekly. What I'm going to do quickly is I'm opening it up so that you can see the weekly chart. I want to see how this shows up because I also want to show the black chart. So let me just go there. One second. There's a tiny delay, and I'm looking at it right now. What do I see? It shows there's the daily. Yeah, come in another second. It's going to come up, and we have the week. There. Oh, beautiful. I also want to do that in black just this my, for my own convenience. I want to see the same thing in black. How does that show up? And the reason why I want to take a moment to show it, I want to see what's highlighted best of all. In fact, what I'm going to do is make this green. You'll see it really nicely and make this red. There it is. Ah, great. So what I'd be looking at at this particular point is that if you're looking at this chart, you'll see that they're from, um, from the November, this, um, no, uh, it'll be the April, from the April high of 2003. 11, there's been a concerted downward trajectory in the slightly lower, slightly declining down channel. But it's been making lower highs and lower lows. Not big deal, but enough. So my recommendation is every time it's gotten into this area, this is the area that is best to say, hey, if I take a chance now, it's been in the it's in the what I call the buy zone in my Chapman Wave methodology. And that says, you know what? There's a chance now that it could rally. And if it does rally, there's so many factors that we can be looking at to gauge whether or not it's successful other than price. Because if it is successful, what you'll be looking at is a test of the nine period exponential moving average somewhere around twenty four, which is two and a half point twenty four forty nine, which is about two and a half points away. Most importantly, and what's really nice about it, is if you're wrong, you know exactly what you want to do. Because a close below, or I'd say a close below today's low would be very negative. I'd even give it a little bit of room. I'd say today's low is 21.45. I'd say 20.95. And you want to be out. You don't want to even risk anything for two reasons. One is that the bounce back says it's going to retest the lows. But a bounce from here says it could turn out to be quite a successful rally. So before we go to the break, I'm going to say to you, if you want to nibble on it, that's exactly what I'd be doing right now on SLW, and I'll do a little bit further analysis because I look at silver as well as soon as we get back. So that so far is my recommendation. Start a position, a start a position. So we'll be back with Ken and Fort Madison and then Brian and Jackson straight off the screen. TFNN is excited to launch our brand new software charting program, The Art of the Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind software, Art of the Charts allows you to scan for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, Butterflies, ABCs, and much more. Art of the Charts is designed to help you when scouring the market for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, and even months searching to find. As part of our introductory pricing, we're offering licenses available at only $59 per month. We're so confident that you'll love this new, outstanding piece of charting software that we'll even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Lock in your low price today by ordering your copy at tfnn.com. 
Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives you Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. With Market Insights, nothing is left to guessing. With the market at record levels, volatility is here, and now is a perfect time to take advantage of a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights. As recently as March 26th, Tom advised his subscribers to liquidate their four short-term equity holdings, closing out all four positions for a combined 15.9% profit. And on April 1st, Tom advised his clients to sell their longer-term position in AIG warrants, locking in more than a 40% profit in just that one trade. If you'd like to see the kind of newsletter Tom O'Brien sends out to his subscribers each morning, then sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of tfnn.com has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you now is the perfect time to open up an account with nadex nadex the north american derivatives exchange is a brand new completely regulated chicago-based exchange and unlike most other exchanges nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform which also features real-time charts and full customization capability one of the advantages of trading with nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, right, folks. We're back. Basil Chapman, Tiger the Editions. Uh, we're on with Ken Fort Madison, and we're looking at uh, SLW, which is Silver Wheat, and I'm showing the black background charts just for the moment because it really does highlight even just way better. Look, look how beautiful you can see. See, Ken, if you're looking at the black background charts, you'll see that the the monthly chart of of SLW uh, there no, there's no notation here, but you'll see that the fast moving average of the MACD deflected severely lower, and the stochastic looks terrible. So I would treat this as as you know I mentioned the other day I would just treat it as a a, a pretty good chance of a counter trend rally in a, in the face of incredibly strong uh, shorting and uh, negative activity. And it's just like, this I really would treat as an oversold bounce. And one of the reasons is, if you look, and I'm going to spend more time, I'm doing Larry's show today. It's my pleasure and honor to be able to do Larry's show at um, noon when mine finishes. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to show some of the, uh, I'll spend more time looking at the different currencies. But if you're looking at the dollar, You'll see that the dollar is, in fact, making a peak D. It's a little behind in this contract that I'm uh, in the index. Uh, it's actually trading at 84.070 in the futures. So, but I believe we're in a, at a peak D. But look, the MACD is still very strong, and the stochastic's at 91%. That that's really good. So my feeling is that it's 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 a good chance to start a small position in SLW. But you're going to have to wait to see if, if the uh, uh, dollar index, which is at 83.99 or 84, just over 84, 
can actually pull back under 83.20. If it does that, then the dollar will take a bit of a breather. I don't know how long. Let's call it five to ten sessions of a breather while gold has another attempt at an arch formation because the arch, I think, is going into the M pattern. For me, it's really clear. So it's only a trade. So I hope that helps you. Yes, that's very good, Basil. Thank you. If you Thank have a you. chance, take a look at FCX, will you please? S. F. Freeport McMoran. Ah, Freeport FCX, Freeport McMoran. I certainly will. Thank you very much for calling. We can Bye -bye. go to Brian and Jackson, Missouri, right? Uh, uh, Mississippi. Mississippi. Yes, yeah, yeah, sir. How you doing, Basil? Yep. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. And look, uh, you, you you kind of partially answered my question a second ago uh, about the GLD. Uh, but the, said, no, 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 no. There are two different uh, things we're looking at. Silver is way weaker than gold. You, the gold you, contract. Yeah, I know, but yeah, but you just said that you thought. See, last week you said that you thought that go uh, the GLD might go to a H formation than an M. That's it. And that's right. what you just said. Uh, right. So, uh, but but yeah. the the big difference is that the gold. Remember, the GLD made a, a contract low of one. Where where did it go? Oops, let me just change this. It made a contract low of 150.30. Was it? Let me just check. 100, 150, 130.51. Mm -hmm. Well, today's low so far. Well, Friday's low was 131.02, and today's 130.85. Now, this is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. And you remember when I initially spoke about it back on the very day that we made the low in the GLD at four, on the 15th of April, that's when I said there's a chance that in this formation we could go about 28 sessions. It's even a chance that if the, an M pattern uh, unfolds and it holds the left side low because of the climactic volume spike technique that I've developed over the years mm -hmm. that you could in fact get an even longer extension maybe 38 or even more uh, measures without breaking the low that's why it's so important at this point now if gold the GLD not gold if the GLD that's a spider gold trust does not break 130.51 it has the potential to go higher than the SLV than the SLW. SLW Silver Wheaton actually has a way better chart than the SLV. It's an individual stock. I think it's got a big proportion in the, in the SLV. But I I like the GLD better as a how can I, as a chart pattern. But it's right. still I've already drawn the side here where I'm expecting the next arch to form. So I'm totally wrong. If the GLD just slices into the 120, goes below 120.30, it doesn't even have to close. If it just goes into that level, then it actually lowers the upside altogether. And that confirms what I'm looking at in the dollar, which is saying this is the first time that the dollar contract has gotten to a D or an E where the stochastic has held absolutely firm. And that, to me, is really important in the dollar contract. And that says that if there's a bounce in gold, it's going to be, I have to treat it as a bounce. But I'm just saying that I think the chart pattern is a little better. And another thing is silver broke the, in the Roman candle monthly chart. The GLD has done exactly what I always talk about, that if it goes into a half of the wick, this is the technique that I've developed, of the, of the Roman candle of, of April, that's last month, there's a good chance it will test at, close to, or just below, the wick, and that's exactly what it's done. It's come within 20 what something cents of that low. Now it's, it could be ready for a bit of a bounce. So the analysis is, is almost the same, except that I think that the chart pattern is stronger in the GLD. I don't know how much of a result it will be in terms of time, but if, it, if it's successful, you could see now another 10 to 14 sessions to the upside, and if that's the case, you would see a nice point gain, maybe not such a great percentage gain, but maybe to the 135.61, maybe the 135.80 area, oh, sorry, 137.80 area. A lot depends. By Wednesday at 1 o'clock Eastern Time, the GLD has to be above 132.90, 133.30. That's the way I'm looking at it. And it mustn't break 150.51. So what you're saying is it looks like it's completing the H formation and it H could go to an M. Could, could it go as high as 144 again, or you think it's going to? Well, because it's held, I have to have confidence in saying that 
a successful bounce from here would imply that the dollar will be, I, I have to put the two together because I think there's now a relationship between the two that I have to respect. That would imply that the dollar would pull back about a point and a half, maybe a little more, and then it would allow it to go at least to the last peak of 139.16 that was made on the 14th, but it has to break 135.62. That's the nine period moving average, and it has, it's been repelled from that level since it broke down on the 9th of May. So I would go step by step. So you would be looking at a position on the long side here? I got in Friday at uh, 131.25. Okay, well then that's a very nice way of doing. You know, I don't even have to tell you. You know where the stop is, and I would, I would even think of adding just a trading position, only by, some like Wednesday mid session if it's acting very well. If it's just going sideways and it's stuck between one thirty two thirty and one thirty one eighty or one thirty one seventy, then I'm going to say, hey, I wouldn't be adding at all. You would, now would need speed to get back up again. So the so one thirty. The one thirty point fifty one area is not somewhere you would put a stop in. You said it could go as low as one twenty nine point. Yes, yeah, so I would because you're going to have a small position if you get in now. I would have. I I wouldn't want to go less than one twenty nine seventy somewhere around there. I'd be I'd be out because if that's going to fail, that if that dollar breaks out, you just make it simple. Dollar breaks and holds above eighty four, eighty four forty six. Let's call it eighty four fifty. That'll keep some pressure on, on, on gold. I think that's the way it's going to work right now. But most importantly, if the GLD independently, because it's so oversold on a shorter-term basis, wow, if by the end of the day it gets to 132.30, I think that's a good sign. All it needs to do is break the high bar of Friday, 133.48, and I think you've got yourself a test of 135.66. Go step by step. I wouldn't get too carried away, but I would say that if it goes to um, yeah, because it's, yeah, it's, it, it's still got that gap. Still got that gap area between one thirty six and one forty four, somewhere around that. Right. Well, the, yeah, but the, you know, the it, because it trades candle. overseas, it will always have gaps. Now, I'm I would prefer to think of it this way: that you could add a slight, uh, just a little bit more on a position if it closes above Friday's high of one thirty three forty eight. The moment if it does go to one thirty five, anywhere in the one thirty five thirty to one thirty five sixty area. That little trading position that you've added, that gets a raise stop, and make sure you don't lose any money on your core position. That's the way I would do it. And right, just let it see how it breaks you. out. Thank you so much, Basil. I appreciate it. Thank you. It. And I will be going, I'll, be, I'll try to go into a little bit more detail with the 120 minute chart, et cetera, in Larry's show in the next hour. But thank you so much for calling, Brian. I appreciate it. Always appreciate your call. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, and, and good luck on the trade. So, folks, the GLD is trading at 132.19 as we're speaking. It's been moving up nicely. Now, interestingly enough, in my opening call, I, I discussed this factor that it, the, the gold was making the H formation. I wanted to go back into the trade that we had, which works on a percentage of the GLD. But I'm thinking that I have other positions that I need to handle. I don't want to crowd my mind out. I, 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 I've got positions that have a chance, and I'm only saying a chance, of turning into longer-term positions than just short-term swing trades. And that's really what I want to focus on. So I consider that to be as important so that if I did get into something like that small percentage uh, trade of, of the equivalent of a GLD, I would be doing something that says, in a way, I'm, I'm playing a shorter-term trend I would rather have a chance of having a rotation take some of the stocks that we've just entered into last week that have the potential to avoid uh, a market turn down. That's all. So I just thought I'd explain that a little bit clearer. Now, uh, in the den, S&P wants to know LinkedIn. Now, what I did in my opening call this morning is I said, I just wanted to show the chart. And the chart said to me that we're in a trading range of LinkedIn. And we've had very nice trades in LinkedIn. Uh, missed an even bigger trade because I, I got out um, too soon. Um, I put my stop in too late. That's what it was. Um, but mostly the 209.91 uh, high that was made at peak D. Now, folks, this is what I'm going to go to in my, in my live workshop that I'm doing uh, here in Newton, Massachusetts on the, on the 30th of May. I'm going to explain some of these um, uh, 
peak Ds and how they work and why it's so important in the Chapman Wave methodology that, you, that, that you're able to keep in mind that there's a waveform as simple as using just a few letters. Well, there are four letters basically, but then it goes, it can get uh, a, lot, a lot more. You can go D, you can go E, you can go F, you can even get G. But it's the D that's really important. So here we go. <clears throat> D, and there's a stock that went right by me to thumb its nose at me. D, D, D. That's the one we went short. And we took a $1.20 loss, a small loss, but nevertheless, saying, ha, you thought you could short me. 3D systems. Anyway, so here we are. We've got a potential for a longer term head and shoulders pattern in LinkedIn. LNKD trading at 182.67, up 0.31 cents. One of the things I'm looking at here is that that spike that had it going from the low of 170.87 on the 10th of May, two days later it's trading at 192.56. It has the same characteristic as what I call the right arm extension, where one of the technical indicators is acting okay, but the others aren't. And you can see... <clears throat> The list of MACD fast moving average crosses positively here. It's kind of stuck in a range. In my range, I said, I think it was like 187 underneath the 192 high to about 170, I think I said 178. That's kind of be the narrow range that I think it's in right at this moment. But what I said is the next 10 point move on LinkedIn on a closing basis from the close on Friday could give us a great deal of information. Why? Because it's a potential it could break above the 192.56 level of the 15th of May. That'll say you've got a cup formation going towards the 202.91 level. Fill in the gap. And downside, it says, hmm, look at this. If it breaks from the 182 area to 172, then you've got to say, whoa, that 170.87 would be that H formation retest. And that gives you another right shoulder failure pattern and it could keep doing that for a while so this will become an isolated event right here going from the breakout of 184 into the 202.91 area and all of a sudden you've got an equal move to the downside which could take you on the short term towards that that doji candle of 159.33 um, sometime in the next two months if that level fails, I do say if that level fails and it is a head and shoulders pattern. I don't want to get caught up. When the market is moving up and it doesn't participate like it happened on Friday, it's saying something is, it's an independent stock now. This is what I'm, I'm talking about. It's made a peak D in the weekly. It's consolidating huge gains going all the way from under 100 from the 94 area back in uh, uh, the, the, the fall of 2013. All the way to 202, I mean, that's over 100, 110%. So I'm just saying, I would be stepping aside. If we got LinkedIn from way back, I would not be touching it. I'd hold it as a core position. As a trading position, any very sharp spike to the upside, I'd say, you know what? You might want to put a raise stop so that it lightens up for you. You don't have to lighten up. Just let it pull back, take you out for a little bit. That money gets dedicated to be put back maybe 20 or 30 points lower at any point in the future. That's the way I'd look at it. It's leg C in the monthly chart. I'm sure it's going to go to a leg D. I like it long term. So we'll be back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Traditions Hour. Dow's up 26. S&P's up 5.48. We'll be right back after these important messages. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position at Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern.
on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the gold report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. Yeah. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability. Because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today. Because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Oh, just as well, I looked down at my notebook. Uh, why I spend all this time with my notebook and I never remember to actually look down? <laughs> I don't know what it is. So I wanted to mention, um, there's a great Leonard Bernstein musical called On the Town. Showing here in, in Boston, and there are a couple of there are a number of really good plays. I happened to uh, we went uh, as part of the series. We went on Friday night uh, to see on the town. It was really well done. Ah, just great music, just really well done musical, and it was just a great, uh, just really good music. And when you think it was written in 1944, 1945, 1944, 45, um, how contemporary, how? Well, of course, it was written in the. Uh, with a sole purpose that during it was during the war uh, that uh, the war was just about to end, but they didn't know. So it was written as enlightenment, and that was really part of what uh, the musicals were all about: enlightenment, uh, enlightenment, not enlightenment, but to lighten things up. But done very well. Another thing is, had a chance uh, on s Saturday, yeah, Saturday, to go to some uh, to one of the shopping malls. Uh, <laughs> not nothing that I particularly I'm fond of doing, but we had some things that we had to get. And once again, I went to the Tesla place. Well, the sales, young young guys, I mean, they, you know, young guys, they they, they got the uh, iPad out, and they got all the stuff, and they're talking, all this uh, magnetics, and uh, just uh, really fascinating, interesting stuff. They, they they really do know, <laughs> they do know the sciences. And, uh, you know, talking about the 310 miles that it does, and then I said, uh, in the summertime, and without air conditioning on, 
uh, which is exactly you know that's what happens. So, but they are fantastic cars. They have, they have the chassis of one, which is really just a huge battery platform, and then the chassis, and then it has the uh, the full the proper car, the car right there in the showroom that you can sit in. And one of the things that they have is a screen, a screen that is like. Um, like a, I didn't measure it, but let's call it an 11 inch. It's really a very big a screen, but uh, vertical. In other words, it's not horizontal, but it's vertical. And it's the full screen. You can get your charts. You can get anything you want. I'm saying to myself, I said, not to myself, I said to the sales guy, I said, oh, I wonder how many accidents have been caused. They've sold actually over 300 in Massachusetts alone of these things. And... um so it's very interesting. Now, when I, I, I used to subscribe as Tesla's the sexy, sexy vehicle, a sexy, sorry, uh, um, a stock ticker at this particular moment. And every once in a while, you get one of those, you know. And uh, TSLA, I'm expecting leg D up. And I, I actually wanted to play it, but, you know, when I'm only expecting one leg to the upside, I don't want to take a risk. But it was a fabulous trade, and I think it's going to be a, a, you know, what are we talking about there? This is probably, um, you know, it's costing them 300000 to make, and they're selling them for 80000 Yeah, I think this is basically what we're looking at. So the price that you're looking at here at $90.82 is just has just no nothing to do with bookkeeping or anything. It has to do with the sexiness of the stock. Um, yeah, sure, there's something going on, but it's illusory. In, in fact, when eventually they actually start making money, um, and they look at expenses to receipts, you know. <laughs> what are we talking about? So, but it is a fantastic vehicle. And I haven't driven it. I'm just saying to sit in. It's really done. They've done a great job. Um, anyway, cut, they will cut away from that. I want to go to a couple of things here. The IYT. Um, IYT is the Transportation iShares uh, Index Fund of an alternative count. Every once in a while, I have to have an alternative count. I don't have to. I use an alternative count when the technique tells me in the chat wave that there is still internal strength and that I need to just be a little careful in my assessment. Wow, is that the, is that the, the show's over? What happened? Hey, folks, I'll be back. I'll be talking about the IYT. I'm going to spend a little more time on platinum and some of the other commodities. Uh, during the break, if anyone in the den has questions on any commodities they'd like me to look at, and I will treat it as, um, oh, I know, that's going to be tough to do. I try to do as much as I know Larry, Larry likes to look at. So thank you for being here. I'll be back.